If you're going to open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 2. As you turn in your Bibles, I want to give a little background to Father's Day for a moment. The first Father's Day was made known by Mrs. John Bruce Dodd. As she knew mothers were being recognized on a special day of the year. She's very concerned about fathers. Her dad was William Stewart. He was left with six children to raise after his dear wife died. Sacrificed and worked hard to raise those children ages six, I mean ages three to 16 years old. In 1910, she spoke to the Spokane, the Spokane, Washington Ministerial Alliance. And on June the 19th was the first Father's Day celebrated. Young men wore the red roses to church honoring the living fathers and other men wore the white in memory of their deceased fathers. Miss Dodge spent the day distributing gifts to shut-in fathers. Her father died, guess what day? June 19, in 1919, and 19, the day she started to honor her father as he died on that June 19. In 1922, it was a nationwide observance in the United States and widely celebrated in Canada. 1966, Lyndon Johnson made a, procl a presidential proclamation honoring fathers on the third Sunday of June. Then 1972, Rich, President Richard Nixon signed the public law that made it permanent to celebrate Father's Day annually. So I just want to read just a moment a few verses today. I won't be preaching. There will be selected passages in the Bible today that we'll be looking at. So let's stand together. I want to read a few verses of the Proverbs. This will be Proverbs chapter 2. You have other selected passages also on the back of your bulletin under the message notes. Take some time this week maybe to read that. Proverbs 2, 1 through 6. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. May God bless his word. You may be seated. I've entitled the message today, A Father's Building Plan. A Father's Building Plan. The story is told one day some men drove their truck to the lumber yard and one walked into the office there and said, we need some four-by-twos. Uh, the clerk said, sir, I think you mean two-by-four boards. He said, well, wait a minute, I'll go and check. So he went back to the truck and asked his friend. He returned and said, hey, sir, you're right, two by fours. The clerk said, well, how long do you need them? He thought for a moment. He said, well, I better go check again. So he goes out to the truck, checks with his friend. He returned. He said, sir, we need them a long time. We're going to build a house. How would you like for them to build your house? We haven't come to build an actual house today, a physical house. We want to talk about a special life. How are we going to build a godly Christian father? We know by the grace of God and the power of his spirit we can do it. He can do it for us. So let's check out some things. First of all, Father's building plan needs a sure and strong foundation. 
We call it the foundation of faith. Faith is a key word. Now, if I was going to build a new house, I would search out a, a top carpenter, a top contractor who had experience, had good references. I'd seen the work done before. In building lives, in building godly Christian fathers, we need the eternal contractor, our great and holy God, the Heavenly Father, who revealed himself through his son Jesus. There is a place in the Bible where we will not turn there, but you can read it this week. It's on the back of your bulletin, Genesis 22. Many of you remember a man named Abraham blessed of God but he didn't have his own son now the Lord told Abraham one day he said you're going to have a son out of your own flesh and blood he'll be a son of the faith son of the lineage of faith well Abraham got to be a hundred years old and Sarah got 90 and they came to her and said hey you're going to have a baby next year this time and she started laughing I'd start laughing too if I was Abraham. Well, this promised blessed son of faith grew up and I don't know exactly what age it is, probably late teen, young adult. God said to Moses, I mean, uh, Abraham, I want you to take Isaac to Mount Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice. Now, that's contrary to, to the Lord God. And there they go now with the wood and knife and fire in hand and they get to mount the mountain and Isaac says, uh, Daddy, something's, something's going strange here. Where's the lamb? And here's where the faith is. If you don't have it, you better get it real fast. You better ask God for it. He said, Son, God will provide himself a lamb. God will provide it. All the while, setting Isaac up, tying him, the wood's there. Now the knife is drawn. Stop! Don't you do it. The angel of the Lord came in. Don't you do it. I understand that you really have faith in me. I know that you trust me. A man, let me ask you something as fathers. Do you really trust God? to go all the way with him. Sometimes you don't understand. But we go all the way. I'll tell you, Abraham's faith increased that day. Isaac's faith increased. And I'm sure when they went back and understood what had happened, the whole community had great faith. The Lord showed himself strong. You know, I was thinking about children who watch and learn about the faith of their fathers. The story is told one Sunday after church, the pastor and his family, they went out to the countryside to meet some friends. And while there, they, the children went outside to play. And in just a little while, they didn't hear anything going on. They said, uh-oh, something strange is going on when the kids aren't making any noise. So they went behind the barn, and they were having a baptismal service. And little Susan, four years old, she'd always heard her daddy say, and I baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. So here she was holding that kitty cat right over that barrel of water. So I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and in the hole you go. <laughs> That's a pretty good picture of faith, isn't it? I wonder what happened to that cat. King David had a son named Solomon. He spoke about true faith. As he sought to put God first there in 1 Chronicles 28. That's a great chapter to read. It's listed on your bulletin there. To know God, serve God with a perfect heart. That's a whole heart and a willing mind. And seek the Lord and don't forsake him. How about you men? Do you know God through Jesus? Are you seeking Him with your whole heart? 
Fathers, do children and grandchildren know your real faith in Christ? Do they see and hear your personal relationship to Jesus? Do they see and hear that you read the greatest book, the Holy Bible? They see that you're a man of prayer, that you're a church member and a a tender of God's house and worship with other believers. Do you visit? Do you care about people? Do you reach out to people? They see you as a true disciple who will train and teach others to grow in Christ. Well, if you're going to have a building plan, you better get a solid foundation of faith. That's the first thing. Secondly, not only solid foundation of faith, you need in the Father's building plan, need some special windows. Now, if you're a builder, a contractor, a carpenter, you want to have a house that has some beautiful windows, don't you? You want to see out of it. I mean, what's a house with no windows? Pure darkness. Concerning our fathers, I want to say today, fathers, we need some special windows of time. What is time? He was a great man. The Bible tells a lot of stories about him. You can read about him in 2 Samuel, especially. Oh, he had many demands. We're talking about a busy man, a government to run, and finances to raise, buildings to build, be built, battles to be fought, songs to be written. Yes, you might say he was busy as a bee. But in the process of being busy, and in the process of living his life, he forgot to make a life. What about you men? Are we so busy living a life, we forget to make a life? Priorities get mixed up. Time for everything. Time for everyone except the children. If you're going to have them, you better take care of them. You know his name. He's the King David of Israel, the greatest king of all Israel. As I said, 2 Samuel tells you a lot about his life and the episodes of his life. But you know, this same thing happens in 2015. I found a story about a young man named Brian. He was 12 years old. He was in the Boy Scouts and planned for his father to go with him to the father-son camp out. Well, he was happy, he rushed home, told his dad. His dad said, okay, we'll, I'll go with you, son. Friday came for the camp out. All the gear was ready by the young Brian, and dad was late. Things went wrong at work. and Well, he said, son, we'll get up early in the morning. Now, you get up early before 7, and we'll be off to the camp out. Time came, and young David was up. Young Brian was up very early, and Dad got up at 9 o'clock. He said, Brian, my back is hurting. I don't think I can sleep on the ground in the camp. He said, you understand, won't you? I have several other commitments to make also. Brian put his things in the garage. He turned around and saw his dad carrying golf clubs and threw them in the back of the car. And off he went. To his business. Brian said these words. He never meant to go with me to the camp. I didn't matter to him, but his golfing buddies mattered. Fathers, it's more than biological. Did you know that? It's more than passing genes of your DNA. A true father, a Real dad, it's mental and emotional and spiritual. It takes time to be a good father. Are you available for your children? It's been called the number one problem of fathers. Dad simply not being there. Not spending time with the children. Sometimes I, I'm leery of statistics. I, I tell you these, you'll have to adjust them or find maybe some better things than I found. I had the secretary to look some things, and, and I searched some things. 
2014, 24.7, that's almost 25 million dads. They were married couples here in America. Also in 2014, listed 1.9 million, almost 2 million single fathers. 43% divorced, 33% never married. 7.4 million children have parents in prison. And I did not, I'm sorry, I did not get the right date on that, the year that was told. Then it said 67% of those fathers in the state prison, there because of alcohol or drug abuse. Over two of three. Dads, have you been checking your life clock lately? Time's ticking. It's ticking fast. And it's going to stop the time you least expect it. How are you slicing your time? You have problems with time? I have problems. Fathers, grandfathers, dads who are single, maybe through death, through divorce. You're still a father. We need the Lord, all of us. That's why I was speaking about the Proverbs. We need to ask God for wisdom. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1 and 7. We all need guidance, the guidance of the Word of God. We need courage, boldness, strength. We need the grace of a holy God. That's what we need. Well, thirdly, we're going to have a father's building plan. We need some solid doors. I call this a solid doors of love. Love. You heard the commercial Motel 6, Tom Bodette, don't you? We'll leave the light on for you. What about fathers saying, we're going to leave the light on for you, but we're going to have an open door of love for you when you come back home. See, dads, we need a relationship of God's love first. You know the great story of Luke 15. You ought to read it this week. I'm going to paraphrase for you. I want to speak about the father's younger son, the prodigal son. Hey, Dad, I'm ready to leave this place. Just ready to get away. Tired of it. Don't want to be around you. Don't want to be around my father. I mean, my brother. I don't want to see this place anymore. I just want to go and be free. I said, all right, son. He gave me his inheritance. Now, inheritance is not for the living. So when he dies, I give you the money. And off he went. He said he went to a far country. Friends, he could have been a mile or two over to the city or to a village. Doesn't matter how far he went. It's what he did. He threw his life away. Well, the father said, I'm glad he's gone. I never want to see him again. Is that what the Bible says? I don't want to have anything to do with him. I'm wiping him off my list. Is that what Father said? No, he didn't. That's my boy. I love him. I held him in my arms when he was little. Played with him. Worked with him. We laughed and cried. We we were family together. We ate together, talked together. Let me share something with you. Relationship never changes. Did you know that? You say today, well, I, I hate my son. Well, I hate my daughter. Well, you may hate the things she's done or he's done, but... You can't take away the relationship. It's always there. She is your daughter or she's your son. You can't change it. You can go change your name. You can say what you want. You can go change a birth certificate. Still your son. That's my daughter. 
But fellowship can really be strained. Well, Father's still praying. He's watching. He's waiting for the son to come home. Then one day it happens down the distance of the road. Can't you see him looking out? Down in the corner of the bend, far down the road. That's my boy right there. The Bible says he just went and got his shotgun and said, I'm going to wait for him. What the Bible says? No. He ran. He ran. He ran to his son. Fell down and hugged him, kissed him. Said, you're alive again. You're, you've made it back home. Thank God for you. Hey, son, it's time to have a party. We're going to get the best. And that's what's going to happen. We as fathers need to learn this example. We need some strong, solid doors of love, forgiving love, merciful love. Like the Heavenly Father, it's a, that's what He is. It's a picture of the Heavenly Father. His arms are open wide. It's the unconditional love of a father. A story from Spain comes to us. And Father and son became very strange one day and they separated and he left home. Father set out to find him. One month, two months, three months, four months. The days and the weeks and the months passed. No son. He said, I'm going down to the paper. And here's what the ad said. Dear Paco, I'm going to meet you in front of the newspaper office at noon on Saturday. All is forgiven and I love you. Your father. Saturday at noon came and 800 of them were standing out there. 800 boys wanting to get right with their father. So many families broken today. Your fathers, you examine your relationship with your children lately. We said before, you can't dispose of your God given bloodline. You can surely destroy your fellowship, though. We need a right relationship to the Heavenly Father through faith in the Son Jesus. Then ask Him to give us a heart of love for our children. Share and care and listen and learn and teach and train them the ways of the Lord. Fourthly today, a father's building plan needs some mighty walls. Now dads, mothers, it won't hurt you to read Proverbs either. But throughout the book of Proverbs, Solomon the writer talks about my son. Hear now, my son. My son. Same thing applies for your daughters. Just a different application. We need some walls of example. Walls of example. One man said, There's two things I've had in life good advice and poor examples. Say that with me. Poor advice and good example. Well, men, I'm going to give you some examples here quickly today. In Proverbs 23, that's listed on your message notes there. But let me give you a few things here. Proverbs 23 and 15 and 16 says, My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reign shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let me ask you, how is your mouth? Fathers, how's your speech today? Are you a false witness? Are you a liar? Are you a truth teller? 
You know, honesty is not only the best policy around here, it's the only policy. You know where I saw that? Years ago in a grocery store on a back door. Friends, if it's good enough for the grocery store, it's high time it's good enough for the home and the fathers. James 3 is a good chapter too. I didn't write that down. You need to jot that down about the tongue. Be a blessing or a curse. It's like a fire. It's like a small rudder on the ship. It's like a small bridle in the mouth of the horse. How are you speaking today? Home, workplace, friendships. Another wall you need to be built is example of the heart. In verses 17 through 19, this Proverbs 23 he said, Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. I'm not talking about a physical heart that pumps blood. I'm speaking of a spiritual heart, the center of your will and desires. A heart that knows God, that fears God. Let me ask you, men, do you really fear God? If more men feared God today, it would be different home lives. Did you know that? If they took God seriously, dads wake up and take God seriously, you'd be a greater, greater change in the home life. Pray with your children. Love the Word of God. Let them see you read the Word. Worship at home. Worship publicly in the house of God. Seek to be a true disciple of Jesus if you're a Christian man. Teach your children what it means to follow Jesus. We need a wall of example concerning our bodies. Verses 20 and 21. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of the flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. How you treat your body? What do you drink? How do you eat? We also can say today the drug scene, the sexually immoral. It's everywhere. What are our men doing? What are fathers doing about it? The story told of the father received the call one day. His son was killed in a car accident. What was found in the back seat? A liquor bottle. Father said, no, no, not my son. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. So he goes home to drown his sorrow. He opens the cabinet for his liquor bottle, and guess what it says? I know you wouldn't mind, Dad. I took your bottle. He was leading an example for him. He was the leading example. It doesn't matter. It can be drugs, pills, needles, whatever you want to call it. We need some true living examples of godly men. More of them. The poem's called A Living Sermon by Edgar Guess. Listen carefully. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one in my any day. I'd rather one walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes, a better pupil and more willing than the ear, find counsel is confusing, but example always clear. The best of all preachers are men who live their deeds, for to see good put in action is what everybody needs. I soon can learn to do it if you let me see it done. I can watch your hand in action, but your tongue too fast may run. The lectures you deliver may be very wise and true, but I'd rather get my lessons by observing what you do. I may not understand the high advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding how you act and how you live. Dear dads, when are you going to make some real building plans? Be sure you have some mighty walls of example. The devoted loving father came to see his very sick son at the hospital that day. 
the young son looked at his daddy as he came in the door. He said, Dad, I'm going to die. He said, Son, are you scared? He said, Dad, if God is anything like you, then I won't be scared. If he's anything like you, I won't be scared. Amen? That's a real living testimony. Fatherhood is not an accident. It's not an incident. It just happens one day. It's a sacred privilege. It is a divine obligation from God and a trust that He's given to us. Now, how are you living? Dads, probably in an audience like this, some of you need Jesus. I don't know what's in your heart, but He does. Why don't you deal with it if the Holy Spirit's calling you right now to come to Him? Come to Jesus. Come by the way of the cross. He died for you. He loves you. He arose again to prove that he has power over death and sin in the grave to give you eternal life. Other men here love Christ. Why don't you come into his church if you're not a member of his church family? Other men might just need to be paused where you are today and bow your head and say, God, I want to be a wise Christian father and I want to be a better father. Will you help me? Could you do that? Let's stand together. For the day comes to lead us. God is speaking to your heart. You deal with him and come as he leads you right now.